Guys, let's have a little fun with photography. I'm gonna show you some basic everyday objects and you're gonna tell me what they are. Ooh, cool. Picture number one. Tell me what this is, guys. It's an everyday object. That is the end of a barbecued rib. A, a candle wick. All right, you're both <gasps> wrong. It's the stem of a pear. <laughs> wow. All right, here's the next one. How about this? Well, what do you got? What do you got ooh, for me? Ooh, ooh. Oh, it's like a postage uh, sort of stamp or some sort of thing. No, it is a napkin. You are both wrong. It's money. This one's easy. This one's easy. Tell me what this is, guys. Um, a shoelace? I'm gonna guess an eraser. You're wrong. Shoelace was sort of close, Ollie. Oh, uh, wow. That... This is so fussy. Keep going, keep going. That's a ruler. You are correct. You got <gasps> that one right. And finally. Ooh, ooh, a loofah, a loofah. Close enough to sponge, yeah. This pretty fascinating video put together uh, and posted on the Macrofying YouTube channel. Clearly what you're seeing are images shot with a macro lens. Pretty fascinating how they change so much when you're zoomed in on them. Pretty incredible photography work.
you'll hear them before you see them. But the roar of engines matched with giggling children is a sound you'll never forget. Kids seem to have a connection with bikers that, that really you can't explain. They gravitate towards bikers. They understand that, that we look out for our own. They understand that, that we cover each other's backs. And when they come into our organization, they, they automatically understand the fact that we're going to be there for them. And that's how Bikers Against Child Abuse, or BACA, started 20 years ago. The idea that children are drawn to the unconditional unity shared by bikers. Folks from all walks of life ride into BACA, where everyday identities are traded in for rider names. Breaking the chains of child abuse is a priority for the group, many of whom know abuse too well. Nitro, a 10-year member and chapter public relations director, sees herself in Baca's kids. It's like, I got justice. I, I, I guess that's how I look at it, is when I can see a smile on a child's face, when I can see what, sorry. What I wished I could have had, when I see that, it gives me that hope, you know, yeah. that, that we can, that we're changing these kids' lives. We're giving them their voice back, you know, and that, that's so important because for so many years I couldn't talk about things, I couldn't share. And while a scene like this may be intimidating, the fear faced by abused kids is often greater. That was the case for Rhythm, who was introduced to Baca when she was just 12 years old after coming out about her abuse. I think that you can't judge a book by its cover because that's what I did when I was 12. I was like, bikers? You want bikers to help me? <laughs> um, especially because I was like, I don't trust people. And But I think that there's somebody that you definitely just have to let into your life. You just have to let them in, like arms open, and you just have to be trusting with them. I think you can't be scared. Um, it is weird hearing, oh, a biker gang helping kids who've been abused, but it's knowing that there are big, scary bikers on your side. And the impact of having these big, scary bikers near is huge. It was a really cool feeling because after I came out about being abused, um, my extended family, like my aunts, uncles, grandparents, they weren't as supportive and didn't really stay by my side or stick around. So when Baca said that they had my back and they were on my side and that I was family to them, it, it just meant a lot. Children are referred to Baca through law enforcement, social workers, and counselors. Riders promise their newest family members support 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as well as physical tokens of strength, like rider jackets and teddy bears. If a child is afraid to go to school, Baca escorts them. If a child goes to court, Baca is present for the trial. For Rhythm, Baca was a sense of security in life's darkest moments. So the biggest thing, I think, for the first year and a half after I came out about my abuse um, was sleeping. I never slept. Um, I had to switch from my room me and my sister swapped rooms, and even then I couldn't sleep in there, so I'd sleep in the loft with my mom. And even then, like, I would call Baca numerous times at night, and I'd just be like, I'm so scared, like, I just can't sleep, and they'd just show up. And I'd go outside sometimes, and I'd talk to them, or I would just hear their bikes, and I would just kind of just fall asleep, like, I'd doze off. So, I don't know, like, just knowing that they were outside of my house, it just, it made me feel like, okay, nothing can happen. Baca became Rhythm's physical and emotional support. They still come to important events, and Rhythm says she owes a great deal of her confidence to the bikers and their unconditional love. For Baca members, their mission remains simple, breaking the chains of child abuse. What else could we possibly do that would be more important than empowering a child not to live in fear? It's also breaking the chains of, of the abuse. So many abusers were abused. And as we work with the children and, and, and they become empowered and they no longer live in that fear, maybe they won't be the next generation of abusers. Maybe someday there won't be a need for Baca. 
that's our goal. We don't get paid for what we do except for right here. And there is no amount that can compare to what we get paid in our heart that we can give a child. As for Rhythm, there's a new sense of peace in her life, matched by her newfound family, a surprising group of people she met. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ew, I look like an egg, I know it. In her driveway. <laughs> I look like an egg.